everybody. I have rarely been as excited as I am today to drive a car. And just how much you'll understand that excitement is going to depend on whether 15 years ago you read Evo magazine. Because if you did, there's a good chance this car may already be familiar to you. And though any day you get to drive a Lamborghini is a good one, and a bright orange manual V12 Murcielago a very good one, this particular Murcielago has always held a special place in my heart because for a number of years this was just about the only car in Evo's fast fleet that I was genuinely interested and indeed emotionally involved in. Because what we have here is not just any old manual Lamborghini Murcielago, as if there is such a thing, this is probably the highest mileage Murcielago in the world currently sat on 296,602 genuine miles. <laughs> this is a dream come true. Unfortunately, today we don't have the dream weather for the dream car, but I am determined to enjoy it regardless. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the story of this car, it belongs to a lovely chap called Simon George, who bought it brand spanking new back in 2004. He'd always wanted a Lamborghini and found himself in the situation where he could afford the deposit and the first sort of eight months or so worth of payments, but that was about all he had of a plan. Man maths in action, he figured, you know what, buy car first, get it to make sense later. So he purchased it and then decided that the best way to be able to keep his car was to share it with others. And so to date, this car has had more than 8,000 people sat in this very seat on a number of different days, most famously those of Sixth Year Experience, a company that Simon co-founded and was involved with for a long time. This was one of the flagships of the firm and one of his most popular cars. It was later joined by a manual LP640, the facelift of the Murcielago, as well as an Aventador and a number of other different cars too. But this one has always held a special place in his heart. Time and weather permitting, I'm going to be filming a separate video with Simon talking through some of the history of this car. But to give you a rough idea, it has been involved in more than one significant smash requiring the car to go back on a jig. The engine was rebuilt multiple times and then recently failed completely, so it is now on its second. It has had three different gear levers, numerous clutches, tires, brakes, etc, etc. This is a well-used car, but not an unloved one. And it is that passion on which he and his friend, also Simon, have founded a new YouTube channel called Driver's Keepers. The whole idea of which is they want to feature cars like this that have been owned, loved, enjoyed, and most importantly used. Simon II has an F430 Spider in manual, which he's also owned for over a decade and put quite a few miles on, enjoying just about every single one of them. Today, they're currently out in my 550 Marinello, which itself has a proud 104,000 miles on the clock, box fresh compared to this. But the idea of both cars is the same. They're special, they're emotional, and they are a lot of fun. I mean, where do you even begin? This thing is just pure theater. From the moment it rolled into the car park last night, and the guys have been great, they traveled all the way down to meet me, they got themselves a hotel room, and that's why, regardless of the weather, we are soldiering on. And it's amazing. It makes a statement, this car. Despite the fact the Murcielago was released now 23 years ago, in 2001, this first iteration to me, it's just perfection. Now, in mechanical terms, the best way to really see a Murcielago is effectively as Diablo Mark III. Underneath, they in fact share a great number of components. The 6.2-litre V12 engine here is an evolution of the 6-litre, which you saw in the later Diablos. And in fact, a number of Lamborghini mechanics have actually told me that a late Diablo has more in common with one of these than it does an early Diablo. Audi effectively used that car as a, a dry run to construct this. And it's a, 
a bit of a mix, this car. You see, underneath you have a, a pretty old school chassis made out of steel sections, onto which they've then bonded a carbon fibre body, with the only exception being the roof that is steel and the doors, which are aluminium. And at launch, the car was actually available explicitly as a six-speed manual, like the one here. But a few years in, Lamborghini debuted their e-gear system for the car, an automated manual, much like Ferrari's F1 box and what Audi then branded R-Tronic. In 2006, the car was then facelifted, now being branded as the LP designation cars, so LP640 for the base model, for its 640 horsepower versus the 580 here, and uh, 480 pounds-feet of torque at 650 newton meters. For those cars, the exterior styling changed a little bit, though not as dramatically as, say, for the Gallardo's facelift. The interior received a few touches, and the e-gear system was also revised. Partly as a result, and also customer taste, for those later cars, the manuals are a very rare thing indeed, and today they command a significant premium. As it happens, the Murcielago across the board is a rapidly appreciating item, I think largely down to the efforts of one Mr. E. Bolian of the United States America. But enough of numbers for a second. Once you've collected your jaw off the floor and managed to drink in all of this car's angles and curves, penned by Luke Donkervolka, you then have the fabulous business of getting in, which involves opening the classic Lamborghini scissor doors that they reserve for their flagship V12s. And you drop yourself into an impossibly low and honestly enormous yet very cramped cabin. There is so much dash in front of me, it's, it's ludicrous. I mean, in terms of how much is between you and the road, you've got on the one extreme of a scale, a motorbike, then you've got a Lotus Elise, where there's a little bit, then you've got an Aston Martin DB9, where there's quite a bit, then you have a Reva speedboat, where there's loads, and then this. You feel so far away from the tarmac, it's, it's ludicrous. The whole thing is a car of extremes, not just in numbers, but proportions too. It's amazing. Although I will say, there is nothing that makes you feel better about yourself than dropping that big scissor door down and then pushing it out of the way with your elbow when you get to get out of it. Now I'm being really, really cautious with this car because I have been told that in the wet, these are not well behaved at all. Yes, it has an all-wheel drive system, a rather unusual one actually, because uh, in Lamborghini fashion, and they did this for all their cars effectively until the Aventador, you've got the engine behind you, of course, but then in most mid-engine cars, the gearbox would go behind that, not Lamborghini. The gearbox is in fact here, and you then have drive sent to both the front and the, the rear wheels, and it's all a little bit odd. They've changed this completely for the Revuelto, where now the gearbox sits behind of the engine. And that is one of the reasons it's a much larger car than its predecessor. Now, the last and only other time I've driven a Murcia Largo, it was an SV, courtesy of the lovely Richard from Challenge the Road. And though I have been told that this will certainly be a disappointment in comparison, the fact is the road conditions weren't ideal for that car, but on account of traffic, I am currently in the process of trying to guilt Richard into bringing his car back to my roads so I can enjoy it properly. And uh, yeah, then today, well, we've got this. I am going to try and enjoy it a little bit more, but yeah, I have been told it's a snappy little so-and-so. It doesn't give you any warning whatsoever, and when it goes, don't expect that you can catch it. Now, it's got relatively fresh rubber on it, Pirelli's, but um, they're also not great tyres in the wet even when they are fresh. In fairness, though, now I've taken a little bit of time to acclimatise to it and get used to it, driving the car at normal, sensible speeds, it's not really that difficult. It's pleasant, it's nice, the engine is ludicrously tractable. I doubt I've really taken it past 3,000 RPM. The ride is a little jittery. The car now sits on nitrons. The original suspension was binned long ago. The lift system also packed up about a decade ago and to fix would cost, I think, about £8,000 and I do believe it would probably break again. There's a design flaw in these, I think also shared with, oh, ow. There's a design flaw in these also shared with the Diablo. Turning circle, not a strong point of this car. Placing that front end, very, very difficult. 
Oh, I'm beginning to relax. This gearbox is interesting. The shift is really, really light, as is the clutch pedal as well. You do though need to make sure to use all of the clutch pedal. If you don't, it will grumble at you and it will let you know it's not happy and this is one of the ways you can wear through that clutch, which even when you're doing it right, I'm told, will last about 20 to 30,000 miles and is 6,000 pounds to replace. And that is because of the way that Lamborghini have laid the car out. To get to the clutch, you have to crane the engine out. <laughs> Madness. There is nothing about this car which is remotely sensible, logical or anything else. But it's a V12 Lamborghini. Would you have it any other way? Oh, and just in case you think I'm talking out of my behind when it comes to saying this is Diablo Mark III, may I present some evidence for the prosecution? First off, seatbelts in the middle, like a Diablo, because that is where the mounting point is. You also get, unlike the Aventador, a more generous boot at the front, which is also air-conditioned, like a later Diablo. And in a Diablo, if you want to do the clutch, you have to crane the engine out. Look at these from underneath and you will see that they do look like a car from the 80s. And that I think is because the chassis is. Having an accident in one of these things is not something you want to experience. Not because it's an unsafe car. In fact, B is for Build is currently working on a Murcia Largo that, um, well, has had a bit of an oopsie. And the owner presumably hopped out and limped away just fine but more for the fact that um, a lot of the parts on this car are either unavailable or ludicrously expensive. Front bumper, 18,000 pounds. Coming home one day, Simon ran over a ladder that someone had carelessly left on the motorway. 48,000 quid. Yeah. And I mention that because I am now going to try and have a little bit of fun in the car, but knowing what I do, I'm gonna be a bit careful with it. Right, let's reverse three-point turn. Visibility at the back is actually not that terrible. I can see. All right, here we go. Let's see, how's grip? Whee! Yep, there's the limit of it. That was first, in fairness. doesn't lack for pace this thing and I am being ludicrously cautious with it as I think is the only way to be. I got a Porsche coming up behind me who I think wants to have a bit of fun and he's gonna be able to have a, a lot more of it than I am. Not that I'm not enjoying myself mind you, I'm having a great time and I wish it were dry, I really really do. Now if you're also lucky enough to be a Lamborghini owner, you love using your car and you enjoy watching content like this, well there's only one way that it gets made and that is by people like you very kindly sharing your cars with the likes of me. So if you've got a raging bull tucked away in the garage and you'd like to see a little bit more about it on YouTube, please send me an email. My address is in the description of every video, it's talk at jm.com. Conveniently, because this car does already have so many miles on it and Simon is determined to get it to the 300,000 marker, I'm hoping that he might agree to sort of bring it back to me on a better day and drive another one of my high mileage heroes. Let's hope. In fact, let's persuade him to do that by giving his channel a like and a subscribe. That'll do it, I think. Oh, really? You, you, you're parked in like the worst place, like literally the worst place you possibly could. And I want to thank that helpful citizen in the Porsche who stopped to tell me the near side brake light in this car is also stuck on. You might notice that in the drive-bys, which we haven't yet done, but we'll do in a bit. Oh. The car actually also has a sprint booster fitted down here, which originally Simon had turned up all the way, and I've asked him to turn it all the way down, because with the conditions as they are, and me not being familiar with the car, well, I, um, I don't want to take any chances. But you know what? I know I'm not using all the revs and everything, and I apologise, that's not going to give you guys the best viewing experience. 
sense it's a great car. The steering is really nice. It's got a wonderful weighting to it. It's not actually as communicative as I might like. Perhaps the four-wheel drive system is robbing it of a little bit of feel, but compared to a lot of modern cars, I really like it. Very linear. It's not insanely quick as many modern Italian cars are. In fact, I don't think it's even as quick as the 550s. The ride is certainly on the firm side of things, and it's quite jittery. You can tell the car doesn't like these lumps and bumps in the road, of which there are many. <laughs> That's good, though, isn't it? That's lovely. In fact, let's just um, let's just do some downshifts because I can do those easily. Right, fifth to fourth, ah, oh, fourth to third, and now third to second. Oh yes, straight bit of road here. Well, let's make it straight. That's about six. Max power is generated at 7,500 RPM. In the later cars, it's eight. Peak torque, 5,400. What a machine. I did also happen to notice while doing my research, there is currently for sale a, what you would call regular high mileage. So 70,000, which is already a lot for a Lamborghini, manual early Murcielago, just like this, for sale at I think 145,000 pounds. And that's significant because where the SV and all that, well, they're, they're lovely, they're also silly money now, beyond half a million quid. Thanks, Ed. And that means I just can't afford one. But that one, now I'd have to part with the Scud or something, I could. Mmm. And as nice a thought as that is, because let's face it, another V12 on the driveway would be a spectacular thing, and this is just an iconic car. The running costs, they're on another level, even compared to the already high costs of the Scuderia, the 550 and the F12. In an average year, Simon recommends bank sort of five to eight thousand pounds, but that's assuming nothing particularly big or bad has gone wrong. Over the years, certain parts have become more difficult, easier, more difficult, and easier again to get. Case in point, the brakes. By default, they were apparently terrible. They weren't actually even as good as the ones on the Gallardo that came out a couple of years later. So he upgraded two Gallardo spec brakes, and now it's running ones that are much better than they originally were. The pedal feel is decent, and as you can probably guess on a day like today, I'm just not going to be able to put them to the ultimate test. The ergonomics are also... Um, interesting to say the least you've probably heard about these cars how the clutches are impossibly heavy and this that and the other well that's more Countach and I suppose a little bit Diablo that's not a concern here you've got power assisted steering and everything and, and you know in terms of the the sheer mechanics of it the force required to drive it's not that bad at all but the driving position not just the visibility the driving position is extreme I'm also a little bit upset that Simon has now taken the duct tape out that was holding some of the interior together. I think there's a little bit of a charm about it. He does want to get this retrimmed again. It was originally some sort of beigey kind of colour. Now it's this black and orange, but it is, well, as you might expect, a bit tired. Don't really mind that. It's not actually anywhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. He recently took it all the way up to Orkney. It has previously been over to Europe. It's, it's been all over the place, this car, and he intends to keep using it. It's got to the point now where, though I'm sure somebody would buy it, for most people with the history, the accidents, the usage of it, the mileage, it's not really worth that much. Certainly not enough to convince him to part with it. And you know what? There's a great joy in that. I've had exactly the same thing with the 550. It's got so many miles on it that I just get in it, use it, and I'm determined now to add to it. Whereas the 430, the F12, they're reaching critical points in time, and I'm struggling to, to take my own advice. I want to just keep driving, keep driving, keep driving. And though, of course, there's nothing really stopping me doing that, I know in my head, I know in the back of my mind, it's going to cost me quite a bit of money. And these cars are at awkward stages. I want to just push through and just enjoy them, but, you know... I'm not of unlimited funds. The 550, though, it's mine, will be mine for a long time, I hope, and so I don't care. And there's a real enjoyment to that. There's a freedom to that. I love it. And I know, yes, there'll always be people out there go, well, if you've got to have finance on a car, then you can't really afford it. And I'm sure most of these people have got a mortgage. And I wouldn't dare say to them, well, you clearly can't afford a house, can you? The thing I love about this car is that even on a dreary, dull, miserable day like today, putting a big smile on my face. I think he thought it was going to be a real disappointment. I don't know why. I'm, 
I'm loving it. It's just sensation overload, this thing. What are you doing? And you just know it is also putting a big smile on the faces of all those around you too. And, well, if these cars can't do that, then what are they for? And I'm coming through a village now, so I have to drop the windows. It is the law. This exhaust, I think he's got it just about perfect. There are fab speed sports caps, I think, maybe manifolds, standard tips, and a mix of different bits. He's experimented a lot over the years to get it right, and he has. Ah, here we go. Oh, I'm doing 12 mile an hour and I feel like a hero. I don't care for the fact that these were in Batman. In fact, it only annoys me because it means there's loads of gray ones about in Batman replica spec and I don't think they wear that color very well. If you're gonna have a Lambo, have it in a bright shade. I'd go yellow like Chiro from Petrol Hedonism. And I know why he's in love with this thing. In fact, there's a whole bunch of people out there now that had Aventadors. I know Simon did, Chiro did, and I'm sure they enjoyed them, but ultimately, they went back because to them, this was a step forwards. And that's got to be a big part of it, hasn't it? I wouldn't even think of owning one of these with the e-gear system. I'm sure it's fine and decent. If you want to own one of these, it's the best way to get into one at a lower price. And not everybody likes a manual box. But to me, when it's a manual box as good as this, and this is great, you'd be missing out if you didn't have it. They did a 40th anniversary, I think, of these. Was it a 40th or something like that? And it was in a lovely blue shade. And they're all manuals because they're early ones. Mm. One day, maybe. One day. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to carry on driving this. And I apologise that I haven't really given you the sort of thorough road test that I would like to. But I do hope you've enjoyed the video regardless. And I want to say a big, big thank you to both of the Simons for coming down. Don't forget to check out their channel, Drivers Keepers. And of course, I want to say a big thanks to you as well. Make sure you've hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hop into the comment section, tell me what you think of the Murcia Largo. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Bye-bye.